Hey, this is Helen Paradise from SoCal, and you are listening to the Barbecue Central Show. We'll do it live. Okay. Well, do it live! I can, I'll write it, and we'll do it live! So to get that perfect barbecue, you use wood. Are you sure you say whatever? We put the lighter fluid on, strike the match, and... Oh. Should we call the fire department? That might be a good idea. Barbecue Central Show. This is the show that talks about all things important in the world of barbecue and grilling. We originate this show from the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame city of Cleveland, Ohio. It is the barbecue capital of the North Coast, and I am your program host, Greg Rampey. Happy to have you aboard here on your Tuesday evening. If you want to jump in on the show tonight, I'm more than happy to have you. It is an email address, greg at thebbqcentralshow.com. And here's what's happening in case you didn't get the newsletter a little bit earlier this afternoon. Actually, scratch that in case you didn't get on the show Facebook page to see what was happening a little bit later this evening, which is now tonight or right now, not to be completely vague. Some things to get into housekeeping-wise in just a minute. But here's what's coming up in about 13 minutes from now. He is on his way down to the Jack Daniels World Championship Barbecue Cook-Off. He is the pitmaster of Rooftop Barbecue. Andy Allen joining me. And we're going to be talking about the trip out. We're going to be talking about his 2017 competition season. And, of course... Hyping up the Jack Daniels this coming weekend that he'll be taking part in and shooting for that grand championship at 9.35. The fourth Tuesday of the month brings one of the founders of the State Cook-Off Association, Brett Galloway, joins me. Not only is the Jack Daniels World Championship Barbecue Cook-Off going on this weekend, but the State Cook-Off Association has its big coup de grace contest this weekend as well, I believe in Dallas, Fort Worth, is it? So we're going to talk to Brett, get a recap of where the top 10 sits right now, points leaders, a nice snapshot of how this event will go down this weekend and all that good stuff. So 935, Brett Galloway. And then in the second hour, of course, the fourth Tuesday of the month brings the most popular newest segment of the show, the Embedded Correspondence Segment. That would include representation from Texas in Doug Scheiding, Oklahoma in David Huff, and Tennessee's Steve Ray. All three are competition barbecue cooks, but as we have come to find out during this fine segment, it's not always about barbecue, and more importantly, it's not always about competition. Certainly, these guys have varying skill levels and experience levels with competition barbecue, and while that's kind of a fun and ever-changing subject to talk about, it's not always what the show is all about. So we'll see what topics they will be bringing to the table at 1014. I have made no last segment guest arrangements because the correspondence segment has carried over into some sort of a second segment. Regardless, whether I let it run long or we break and then we come back to finish out. But I have some other items kind of in an open segment sort of calibration that I can talk about as well. So that's what you have this evening. Rooftop barbecue coming up next. Brett Galloway after that talking about the SEA big finishing event, the national championship, or perhaps it's a world championship. We'll talk about that. And then the embedded correspondence segment at 1014 with Doug, Steve, and David. Greg at the BBQ Central Show.com is the email. If you want to jump in, let everybody know the show's on. I would love you to do that. Uh, Facebook post it. The live video stream is on the show Facebook page. If you haven't liked it already, do that. Facebook.com slash BBQ Central Show. 
You can also find it on Outdoor Cooking Channel. Programming note, that kind of dovetails nicely into this mention, at the end of the year, and I'm just putting it out there now, and I will do it a number of times before the end of the year, but at the end of the year, to end at the end of this year, not starting in the new year, I will not be streaming this video to the Outdoor Cooking Channel anymore. I will be going exclusively to the show Facebook page and potentially to a new show YouTube page that I'm in the kind of process of putting together. I do have a barbecue for you YouTube page, but at some point a number of years ago, YouTube dinged me on the current page that I have, which is total BS. But in any event, the show will continue on Facebook, the show page, BBQ Central Show, or also and or on the YouTube page, but not on Outdoor Cooking Channel at the year end or in the start of the new year. And again, I will make sure to remind you as the time draws near. So if you want to try out the Facebook page just to now and see what it's like, if you've never done that, go ahead and have at it. I will make this point of note. Facebook at this point does not have a live chat feature, which some of you have come to know and enjoy with Outdoor Cooking Channel. However, YouTube does offer a live chat room. So I'll make final decisions on these services at some point here over the next handful of weeks. And of course, I will continue to keep you updated on this show, also via the social media channels. Alternatively, you can always get the live audio stream via the main website, okay? Or through apps such as Simple Radio or TuneIn, which can all be found on iOS app stores and on Google Play stores. That's kind of how the show was originally meant to be consumed anyway. Audible only, not with the video stuff, but things change. We either adapt or we just become stagnant and fade away like all the other podcast shows. Also, soon I will be releasing what I am terming as a best of the Barbecue Central show supplement. I don't I don't know if I can call it a podcast. I guess it would be a podcast cuz we're going to release it schedule on a scheduled time frame. But it's going to be called the best of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less. And again, this will show up once we start it. I'll keep you abreast of that as well. But if you subscribe to the show already, and if you don't, if you're just getting the show live now, you can go to iTunes and Google Music and all that stuff and just search Barbecue Central show. Uh, you'll see it with the grill and the fire. It's the one with like 700 episodes in it. And just subscribe and you'll never miss it. So if you missed a live show on Tuesdays, Wednesday when you wake up, it will magically appear. And you can consume the show at your convenience, which is by and large how 98% of people get the show, I think. But within that feed, we will be releasing a best of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less. Now, what does that mean? So first of all, it's going to be a supplement to the podcast feed. So once again, if you subscribe to the show already, it will just magically appear once a week. It will not be Wednesdays. It will probably be later in the week, just to help you get through that weekend. The show, while a brainchild of mine, is being contracted to a large barbecue centralite, a guy who was versed with audio gear and video gear, but this is just going to be an audio podcast only. And he's been a guest on this show. You would know him as John Solberg. Guy who makes his own charcoal who's told us about pig fat number of other items as he has guested on this show but john is actually the guy that i am contracting to put together these shows but in a very high level not to get into the weeds because you'll be able to figure it out yourself plus we'll have some introduction episodes he is rummaging back through the archives of this show which is wide sweeping and substantial and he's picking out, let's say, a June 23rd from 2011 episode. And he's combing through there. And maybe I've interviewed some pitmaster or a blogger or whoever. And he's paring down that 20 or 30-minute interview, depending on how long it was originally, 
into the best 10 minutes of that segment. And then he's going to string two of those together. So it will be a total of around 20 minutes, but each segment, there'll be two per episode, will be 10 minutes or less. So at longest, it will be about 20 minutes or less than that, if that makes sense. Each segment, 10 minutes or less. So you can kind of get a taste or a refresher of some of the things. Maybe you've never even heard it. He'll also go ahead and document which episode it is. We'll try and link in the notes, how you can go back and listen to that show as well. So all fun, cool stuff coming up. Shout out to John Solberg for doing this. Again, I don't have a specific release date. We're trying to get some backlog in the can. So when we start to release it, uh, there won't be like a hot demand to make sure that everything is getting kicked out the way it should. But look forward to that. The best of the Barbecue Central show in 10 minutes or less. Come on, let's go. Andy Allen coming up out of the break. Let me talk to you quickly about Butcher's Barbecue. Folks, here we go. One of the most highly recommended kind of all-encompassing injections and rubs and sauces. Dave Bosca has been on the competition trail for years and years, racking up grand championships and RGCs and top 10 meat category finishes, high team of the year finishes in KCBS. He's won on television shows as well. And you know the products by now. The tried and true injections, kind of what everybody aside from Fab, was maybe basing their injections on, by and large, right? Then he came out with these great rubs. The Honey Rub, which is one of my favorite rubs. Then, most recently, he came out with four new rubs. The Pecan, the Cherry, the Chipotle, and the Triple Secret Blend. Most, most recently, Grilling Addictions came out earlier this year. Great especially for high heat grilling, but also good on the whole situation when it comes to low and slow grilling or low and slow barbecue, I might add. And then the sauce, gotta love the sauce. Butcher's sweet barbecue sauce is good in a couple of different ways. Really good all by itself, right out of the bottle. Go ahead and put on whatever you want. It complements pretty much any meat or seafood or whatever you're gonna use it on. Or you can use it as a base sauce and start to doctor from there, whatever your little heart desires. Here's what I recommend. If you're going to get the sauce, get a pack of six because you're going to use it in so many different ways and everybody in the house is going to love it. It's kind of universally loved in my house, which means it's probably going to be universally loved in your house. I have a house full of women. They don't like a lot of stuff, but they love the Butcher's Barbecue Sweet Barbecue Sauce. If you have a brick and mortar store, you're not carrying Dave's products, go ahead and get an email to him. Ask how you can become a dealer for them today. You can get these fine products in your customers' hands and they will thank you for it. Dave and I will thank you for it as well. These products extensively tested in the backyard and on the competition trail, so you know they're gonna deliver on the goods, of course. All right, head on over to ButcherBBQ.com and stock up. That's ButcherBBQ.com. And we're back with Andy Allen from Rooftop Barbecue to talk about the Jack. Stick around. We'll be right back. Live from the Barbecue Central Radio Network Studios in Cleveland, Ohio. You're listening to the Barbecue Central Radio Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, welcome back. The 2017 grant program from Smithfield was a raging success this season. So, if you want your event... Flip. If you want your event to be considered, head on over to smokinwithsmithfield.com right now. Click on the grant program section and apply for the 2018 grant program. Applications are now being taken and extended to November 1st. Don't miss out. It was really popular. 
this past season. So if you want to get into the 2018 grant program, I recommend that you go ahead and jump on board ASAP. Smokingwithsmithfield.com. All right, the 29th annual Jack Daniels World Championship Barbecue Cook-Off taking place this weekend. Many will be making the pilgrimage from all over the country and, yes, the world to compete in this event. One of them leaving tomorrow to start the trip. He is the pitmaster of Rooftop Barbecue, one of the premier West Coast barbecue teams to be certain. So let's go ahead and race to the hotline. And welcome back, friend of the show, Andy Allen. Andy, how are you, buddy? Hey, Greg, how you doing? I'm doing Good. absolutely fabulous, Andy. Appreciate you making time for the show. And I guess before we get into the Jack Talk this evening, let's go ahead and hit a little bit on your 2017 season for Rooftop Barbecue. I know you and a few other big names out there in the California region right now are kind of battling up against it. You are coming off a win at the Orange County Contest a week or so ago. Tell me about that and kind of how you're gauging your 2017 season so far. Uh, well, it started off slower, but, you know, this last half, we've really pick it, picked it up. We've, uh, let's see, in the last seven competitions, we've been in the top four in all of them, uh, and only one of those was a fourth place. So this last half has been really good to us. Andy Allen joining me here on the show. Uh, Andy, you've seen West Coast teams win some of the biggest titles here over the last handful of years, uh, not in California, by the way, but all over the country. Do you feel that Cali teams are still, or not still, but are they getting the right amount of respect from the other barbecuers across the country? Yeah, I see that a lot now. I mean, you know, Big Papa winning the Royal, that was kind of the start. And really, you know, all of us have been putting catch up with whoever's in the lead in California and all really just improving, um, you know, trying to get to that top spot. So California barbecue's come a long way the last couple of years. And, yeah, I still get a lot more respect coming in. Um, a lot of the teams are using the West Coast offense rubs uh, from Steph and Sterling. So, um, yeah, California's coming in its own right now. Andy, where do you stand on judging right now in the KCBS? I guess, in other words, is there a few folks doing a lot of chirping, or is there a legitimate issue that you see and that you keep hearing about when you're going to competition, something that needs to get addressed to keep competition barbecue heading in the right direction? You know, there's always the table of death and the angel table, but actually this last uh, competition in Orange County, uh, there's word going around that they're trying a new system out. I'm not sure if, you know, anyone in KCBS is listening um, and if it's supposed to be out there yet or not, but they're spreading the judges out um, based on their average score. So I saw a big improvement. Um, at Orange County, looking at the scores, um, you know, the first place tables um, were all over the place. You know, it wasn't just one table that was giving away all the first place calls. So, yeah, I was pretty happy with that when I saw that come out. Is that something that you would hope is kind of rolled out through the rest of the country? Or as far as you know, is the test just in certain regions or is it something that they were kicking out all over? I think it was just a test. I think they're still trying to dial it in, but I, I hope it goes nationwide. It's the best way of doing it. Um, they have a, what's it called, the West Coast Shuffle that uh, some of our uh, uh, reps put together where they would uh, assign seating depending on how many contests they've done, uh, which was good, but, you know, there's always that master judge who, you know, likes to give out sevens and, refuses to give out nines. So I think this is a lot better system. Andy Allen from Rooftop Barbecue joining me here on the show. Uh, Andy, as I had mentioned a couple minutes ago, this weekend is the 29th Jack Daniels World Championship Barbecue Cook-Off. What was your path to the competition this year? How did you get invited? Uh, we got our call from uh, Wendover, Nevada, winning that last year. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that was a good one to win. That was a $10,000 uh, GC there, so uh, you know we got double lucky getting the jack draw and the winning the big money on that one. Have you been to the jack before? Yeah, we went uh, not last year, but the year before, and that was also for a uh, different Nevada competition, the Las Vegas Downtown Throwdown. So yeah, we're excited to go back. I mean, everyone just wants to go that one time, but to get called back a second time is a real honor. 
You know, Andy, I've had some conversations with pitmasters in the past who say they do alter their program a bit when it comes to the jack because of that kind of wild dynamic of that judging tent where you do have some seriously seasoned veterans. You also have some people that are literally getting indoctrinated the night before, and then they're going to be judging your barbecue the next day. Do you have that alternate program to run this weekend, or have you done that when you are down there the last time specific for Lynchburg, or is it the same rooftop program you run each and every weekend that you go out and compete? Uh, brisket's a big change. Um, we learned our lesson the first year we went to the Royal, um, you know, just heading that direction away from California. And at the Royal, the first day we turned in uh, our normal savory brisket, uh, hammered. Um, people kept on telling me you have to make it sweet out here. And then, uh, so we sweetened it up with our rib sauce uh, along the top edge. And uh, I think we took, um, you know, we got a 180 the next day at the Royal. So then we took that same recipe. This is the same year that we went to um, Jake and we sweetened up our brisket there. And uh, I think we took ninth our first year at the Jack. So that's something. Um, my brisket's a little sweeter than it used to be, so I might not change it. Uh, it's been doing pretty good for us this last few comps. So would you say that the farther um, east it, you get out of California, the sweeter you want your beef? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they don't like it sweet here at all. Um, and I know, you know, it really depends on where all those judges are coming from. I think the farther east you go, if you could keep going, then you don't want it sweet again. So there's a fine line, you know, but good food is good food. That's what they always say. So, you know, turn in good food and hopefully the judges don't punish you for it. Um, we'll also probably be turning in pulled pork. I have a feeling that, uh, some of these, uh, new judges are going to be expecting that. So. We'll probably run. We used to turn and pull before, too, so we might run that program again. By and large, from a pork standpoint, Andy, are you one of the teams that will go for the money, muscle, medallions, and, and turn in a box of that, or are you typically all over the board when it comes to pork on the turn-in? Uh, we'll turn in chunks and uh, money, muscle most of the time. Uh, we had some really good success a few years back turning and pulled alongside that. So we know how to do it, and we'll probably just go back to that, but I like to show a little bit of variety, um, especially with uh, rookie judges. Andy, has, was there a trend where teams were turning in just money muscle, or have you always seen it with some other accompaniment in the box of pork? Oh, no, I don't, there's lots of teams that turn in just money muscle. Some of the really good teams in California are turning in just money muscle. So, um, yeah, I mean, if you, if you got a judge that – knows what to look for and, you know, isn't expecting something, then, you know, money muscle is the best cut, so might as well give it to him. Would you like to see a requirement that turns in stuff from all around the butt instead of just a money muscle? Is there some type of a lack of, well, I don't want to say lack of uh, pit mastership, but is it not as hard to cook for the money muscle as it is the whole pork shoulder? Uh, it's definitely more work to turn in. I mean, our box will take us a lot longer to, uh, you know, find all the chunks and especially when you do pulled and get that right and season it all up right. But, you know, I'm, I'm on the school of turn in what you want. You know, I'm open to all the smokers, anything. You know, I think barbecue in general should be uh, anyone's own interpretation. So, Andy Allen joined I'm me here on the show, all. pitmaster of Rooftop Barbecue. Uh, Andy, as you well know, no guarantee that a team will ever go again to the Jack. If you go the first time, you're lucky enough to be going your second time. Unless, of course, you win that seven in the allotted time frame. Not so easy to do, by the way. <laughs> when you went down the first time, were you going down to soak up the experience and you made a deal with yourself before you got there with, hey, we want to go down and enjoy it. However we finish, we finish. Or do you forego some of that experience in order to hone in and try and win first time down? Uh, for anyone that's going the first time, I try to tell them to go a day early. You know, get there Thursday minimum. You can get there Wednesday if you want. But, you know, knocking the day on Thursday. Um, they do have the dinner on the hill Friday night. Um, the first year we were there, we left a little early uh, to get back to our chicken and get that seasoned up. But uh, this year we're going to 
try to enjoy it a little bit more. I think, um, you know, we got that call the first year, so we were pretty happy with that. So this year we're going to really try to enjoy the experience. But, yeah, just get down there early and knock everything out, go miss Mary Bubbles, um, go do the tour, and uh, that way you can focus on your cook. Is it easy to get distracted with all the other goings on to kind of forget about the program and make sure that you're dialed in? Uh, I'd say Friday night does make it a little harder. Um, that day around the hill is really cool, and they bust you up there, and they got bands playing, and yeah, uh, Lynchburg lemonade flowing. So, uh, yeah, I could see people having too much fun up there and getting on the late bus to come back down. <laughs> Andy, there's debate every year about which of the majors is the most impressive to win. The Jack, of course, always in that conversation. It also has that mystique that uh, perhaps some other com- uh, that other competitions might not have. How do you see a win at the Jack compared to an American Royal Invitation or Open win or Sam's Club national title or perhaps even the burgeoning World Food Championships coming up? Uh, I, yeah, the Jack's got a mystique about it. It's hard to explain um, just because you have to cook good and then you also have to get really lucky. And, uh experience of being there makes makes it worthwhile but that one would probably be one of the top ones but actually sam's club uh the way they run their program and uh, the elimination that's probably the most prestigious to win um the royal you have to cook good but you have to get lucky there too because there's a lot of tables but um yeah sam's club's probably the most prestigious but i'd say jack's probably the most fun I'm certainly not trying to get ahead of the weekend here by any stretch, Andy, but if you won this weekend, would that clinch, (laughs) would that clinch best win to date title for the team at this point? Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't even, that might be our retirement sign right there. Well, you would have to go back the following year because you get the automatic invite to go back if you win, right? (laughs) Yeah. But then, but then everyone's looking at you like, uh, you know, unless you're Tuffy Stone, you can win it a couple times back to back, but um, yeah, I don't even want to think about that. You know, um, it's funny that you mentioned that because uh, Tuffy Stone won it last year, won it the year before, potentially could win it three times in a row. How amazing would that be given the fact of how hard it is for a lot of teams to get in and maybe some teams only go once and never get to qualify? For a guy to have won it multiple times and doing it in succession, pretty amazing stuff. Oh, yeah, just to win it once is amazing. So I don't know if that'll ever be repeated. Um, you know, that'll go down in legendary right there, legendary status. Andy, if we could transition out of the Jack Talk just for a second, and uh, you're also uh, doing business with Green Mountain Grills, of course. Uh, they're a sponsor of this show. One of the products that, well, let me take a step back. One of the niches that I had called out early in the year that I thought was going to see a lot of growth was this high heat pizza or the Neapolitan style pizza. So thin crust, you're cooking at extremely high temperatures, you know, maybe in that two to three minutes or less from when you launch it in to when you're taking it out and eating it. Everybody's having a lot of fun, make it how you want it. Green Mountain Grills introduced the pizza insert that fits the Daniel Boone and the Jim Bowie. How has that been received into the market from what you're hearing? And what do you like best about that implement? Because I find it absolutely fascinating, and I'm using it at least pretty much once a weekend. Yeah, I have one set. You know, I have two Green Mountain Grills in my backyard, and one of them set up just for the pizza oven. I don't even take it out. Uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. We uh, When we first came out, we couldn't even keep them in stock. So um, it was received very well. And then... Um, yeah, I mean, making pizzas in four minutes. And, you know, I've had a few pizza parties while I've invited some friends over and everyone makes their own. You line them up and, you know, 15 minutes later, you have five pizzas. So um, it's, it's awesome. Uh, and, you know, people are doing some new stuff with it, uh, uh, putting steaks in there in a cast iron pan. Mm. And, you know, that, that's, that's been the one thing that's always kind of hurt pellet girls in general is just the high heat. You know, people want that sear, so... You know, being able to get up to 900 degrees in a pellet grill is uh, pretty amazing. Andy, one of the other items that is going on within the corporation structure is this virtual contest, I guess. I've talked about it a couple times over the last couple weeks, but 
uh, for the folks that just might be turning in for the first time and hearing about it, uh, give me that high level snapshot of what's going on at Green Mountain Grills and the competition. Okay, so some of us marketing guys kind of got together. We want to put um, uh, a new photo contest up, and we're running by ideas with each other. And, you know, I do competition stuff, so we kind of thought about uh, structuring a photo contest, but um, having it set as a KCBS style. Um, so it's open garnish. You know, we're not going to require parsley boxes or any of that stuff, and um, we're pretty lenient on the meat, too. So right now we're doing the rib category, and right. it goes until the 29th, I believe. Yep. So we're opening up to, to beef ribs, uh, baby backs, you know, pretty much any rib you can think of. And uh, people are going to submit um, on their own pages and just use the hashtags and uh, tag Green Mountain Grills in it on uh, Instagram, Twitter, or uh, Facebook. And then uh, we actually lined up uh, some KCBS certified judges. They're going to do all the judging, and um, they're going to go off uh, execution and, ex and uh, appearance. So, you know, you can't do taste, so um, we're going to go off, you know. These judges know what they're talking about, and, you know, they've seen a lot of barbecue. So them looking at a rib, they'll know if it's tender or not um, just by how it looks, you know, the pullback and all that stuff. And so we're trying to keep it as close to that as possible. What what do you win if you win the then, whole thing? Uh, Daniel Boone. Oh, nice. Uh, so our medium sized grill. Yeah, Daniel Boone is for the grand champion. We have a Davy Crockett for reserve grand, and then we're paying out the or not paying out, but giving prizes to the top three in each category. And where do you so, go to get involved with that? Uh, you can go to our Facebook page, um, and then we have a link on there. Um, I believe. The address is greenmountgrills.com slash grill dash off. Uh, we have that link on our Facebook page and you can join. And we're not requiring registration, but if you register, we'll keep you up to date on uh, the happenings of it. Andy Allen is the pit master for Rooftop Barbecue heading out tomorrow to make that trip to Lynchburg for the 29th annual Jack Daniels World Championship Barbecue Cook-Off. Andy, always appreciate the time, man. Thanks so much for doing it. Thanks a lot, Greg. I'll talk to you later. You got it. There he is, Andy Allen from Rooftop Barbecue. All guests on the Barbecue Central Show will appear via the Smithfield Hotline. Yummy. That's right. So he was there two years ago, not last year, but making the trek back for this coming year or this coming weekend, I guess. And he has said... I don't know how many times I've asked the question. I almost feel stupid for asking it every time, but inevitably, just like this time, I think last year we might have had Darren Worth talking about going down, kind of hyping it up a little bit, and said, hey, how do you cook? Do you cook different? You always hear about the wide-sweeping array of experienced or not experienced and medium-experienced judging palates, and do you accommodate for that in your turn-ins, all meats, some meats, whatever, and he said, now I take what I, you know, you bring the girl you brought to the dance or whatever that saying is. And Andy Allen right away said, absolutely, I'm making an adjustment. Briskets has got to be sweeter. And the farther you get away from California, the sweeter it's got to get. However, he did say until you get so far east, then it's got to swing back more towards savory. So the coastal regions, east and west, like savory brisket, but the, you know, Mid-country and southeast might like a little sweeter brisket. So he did say that he will be making that adjustment when he gets into Lynchburg for the competition this weekend. So good luck to him and Team Rooftop Barbecue. I'm going to talk to you quickly about the CHOPS power injector system before we get to Brad uh, Brett Galloway from the State Cook-Off Association. The National Barbecue Association's 2015, 2016, 2017 Barbecue Tool of the Year is the CHOPS Power Injector. There's three different sizes to choose from. I'm going to tell you about them right now. The number one seller is the half-gallon CHOPS Power Injector. This one is designed for competition folks or to pump up the backyard warrior like me or you. Easy to use. Clean it, fill it, pump it, away you go. 
Well, you might be asking me, what if I have just one brisket or one pork shoulder to do? I don't need to fill it all the way up, do I? No. Just put in what you need. It uses it all. Comes with a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Your cost, 100 bucks. You also pay additionally for shipping anywhere. Then you have the one gallon chops power injector system designed for catering and bigger jobs. It will hold double the amount of the half gallon. That's why they call it the one gallon. Some use it in competitions like Memphis and May whole hog, or maybe you're a caterer and you're cooking 10 shoulders and you're trying to make sure everyone's just perfect. That's why you're going to want to use the one gallon. This one also comes with a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Costs you 120 bucks. You pay shipping additionally. The newest one is the Chops Full Power Injector System. It's electric. It is the commercial and competition Big Daddy. It's not a holding tank, but a three and a half foot pickup tube that you can put in any size container from a few ounces to a 55 gallon drum. It was designed for Chef Rob at the best barbecue restaurant in Kansas City. He has said time and time again that with the Chops Full Power Injector System, his briskets are better than ever. This one comes with a crazy amount of cool stuff. It's 325 bucks cost to you. Plus, you pay shipping additionally. A number of the top pitmasters in the world are using the CPI system every day to make their barbecue better than everybody else's. Here's the deal. We live in a foodie world that now requires flavor in every bite. Want to do it fast? This is how you do it. It's not just for meat. How about alcohol-infused watermelon? Sure, why not? Every injector hand-assembled in Kansas City, Missouri, USA. If you want extra accessories, they have them. You want to shoot medium ground spices? They got you covered for that, too. Here's what I suggest. You check out the website, barbecuekansascity.com. That's B-A-R-B-E-Q-U-E. B-A-R-B-E-Q-U-E, barbecuekansascity.com. That's barbecuekansascity.com. Pick up the CHOPS power injector system. You'll wonder how you ever inject it with a single needle setup. Trust me. I wondered that's the first time I used it. It's great. Easy to clean, easy to use, no problem. BarbecueKansasCity.com. We're back with the State Cook-Off Association World Championships talk next. Stick around. Ready to get on the air? Call 216-220-0966. Now, let's get back to the LeBron James of Barbecue Talk. Craig Rampey. Hey, welcome back to this portion of the show, ironically enough, being brought to you by Green Mountain Grills, manufacturers of some of the best pellet cookers out there on the market today. If you are looking for a big cooker to house a lot of food, they got one for you. If you're looking for medium size, they got you covered there too. Something to take on tailgates, well, right headlong in the middle of tailgate season, they got you covered there too. Pellets to fire those cookers, check them out at GreenMountainGrills.com. That's GreenMountainGrills.com. I love my Green Mountain Grill. You can love yours as well. And don't forget about that pizza insert that I had mentioned as well. All right, the Steak Cook-Off Association continues to gain popularity. Not only is the Jack Daniels World Championship Barbecue Cook-Off going down this weekend, but the biggest steak cook-off in the whole wide world is going on this weekend. And we're going to be talking about it with Brett Galloway. Brett, how are you, buddy? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Craig? Uh, yeah. <laughs> good, Brent. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. But you caught me. Thank you. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, are you like, are you right? Can you got to get right up on that microphone? You're, okay. Can you hear me now? Uh, eh, you kind of, you kind of sound like you're in a, in a small room away from everybody. Awesome. Let's yeah. try this. Is this better? <laughs> That's about the same. Can you hear me now? No, about the same. Still can't hear me. Yeah. So. All right, we'll go to phone so if that's all right with you. Yeah, just call me on the phone. All right, stand by. No problem. We got this new fandangled system that allows me to just go right, right away to stuff. Is it going to ring? I don't know. I guess we'll see. Maybe it won't. Hey, hey buddy. Hey. Is that better? Yeah, that's way better. Much better. Oh. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, all right. So let's talk about, first and foremost, the West Memphis Great 
Midwest Steak Cook-Off that took place this uh, this last weekend. And if I'm not mistaken, if the numbers were right, 101 teams? We did. We had 101 teams show up, and, uh, man, it was a great cook-off. They had a Germany cover band there, but it was an all-day deal at a at a uh, Southland track. It's a, a Greyhound track there in West Memphis, Arkansas. Great weather. It was just a great event. We we really look forward to that one every year. And uh, I drew the straw, got to go to that one, while Ken went to uh, Creekside in Australia. So uh, one of the other guys in Australia, another guy in, in Texas, another guy in uh, Arkansas, another guy in Kansas. Finished the season strong. Wow. Uh- 101 teams, is that a record to date, or have you seen them bigger than that on a, on a weekend style of it? Uh, no, we've actually had 128 teams twice. Wow, really? The same event has hit 128 twice. Which one is that? Uh, that is Edinburgh, Texas. It's not Mexico, but you can hit a driver five iron from there. Wow. It's close. Yeah, but it's they run a great event down there. Are you pulling, are you pulling people from out of country there, or are they all... Uh, in-country participants? No, they're all in-country. They cook a lot of IBCA down there, and Mm -hmm. uh, they've got a strong following. They probably average 70 teams in South Texas for their events. Uh, But Ronnie's been running this event great. and um, Man, they had 120 barbecue teams, I believe, and 128 that cooked everything. So it is a uh, great event. From a space perspective, do you... I'm trying to think of the best question to ask here. When when you are okay. when the when you're being approached by somebody saying, "Hey, we're going to put on this event," are they giving you an idea of how many teams they think they might pull at an event, and then get space accordingly? Or are you ever in a position where you're like, "Oh my God, we didn't think the turnout was going to be this good, and we're tight for space." Well, generally, on a, our spaces are ten by twelve. I mean, you don't need a need a whole lot of space to. Right. Tip- cook two ribeyes so um you know that's changing a little bit as some of the barbecue guys have came into it they're bringing their 12 or 14 foot trailers to carry all their equipment and that's changing things a little bit but hey we welcome that but we we really space isn't too much of an issue because of that factor brett galloway joining me here on the show the website staycookoffs.com if you want to check it out while we're talking Let's go ahead and cover the points standings. Uh, do we have a points chase final result here? Yes. Uh, right. Our Pelican National Rankings are final. Uh, Dan final, Judge, Dan final. Oh, let, me give, let me give the uh, drum roll. Okay, go ahead. There you go. Dan Judd and Goose Terry out of Arkansas uh, won first place this year. They, they entered 43 events. They had really? Over 200 and, I think it's, yeah. 43 events. They they would hit an event on a Friday, try to hit a Saturday one, and occasionally hit a Sunday so they could kind of combine them. But they chased these things. What was neat is the guys, we, we saw a great spread this year. That Second place was from Scott Lindley out of Iowa. Third was Dan Ure out of Nebraska. And then, you know, sixth place is old Johnny Joseph. He's been our three-time points champion. So I uh, don't Finished sixth this year, which is a great finish for him. And your buddies, Poncho and Lefty, uh, Roland Escobedo, they ended up in eighth. So they finished the season strong as well, which uh, brings us to the championship. Every one of these guys has a chance. I mean, it is, it's 114 teams we'll have. We're going to be at Billy Bob's in Fort Worth, Texas. You ever been to Billy Bob's? Never once. Do you remember it? Oh, no, I've never been once. <laughs> Oh, okay. Never been once. Okay. Yeah. I got you. Um, they've got an indoor rodeo arena there. There's pickup <laughs> trucks inside this thing. It's huge. But we are right at the front doors on a rodeo plaza all the way up up the uh, plaza there to where they walk the cattle twice a day. So some teams will be set up, you know, 50 yards from cattle, I mean, which is almost cruel, but kind of neat. So uh, it, it's a great place for the championship. Um, 114 teams. We got eight international teams coming. There's guys from Canada, uh, of course, the U.S. We got ne- guys from the Netherlands, Germany. We even have a team from Australia this year that came over. But all these teams have won an SA event or finished in the top 10 in points. 
So the, these are the best of the best. It, it's anybody's, I mean, it's a toss up. This will be interesting. And this is really a world championship. This wouldn't be just a net, like the world series says it's a world series, but it's really kind of like a national championship, but this is a real world series. If you are coming in from out of the country because you qualified and you're making that trip, a true world championship can be crowned this coming weekend. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we're going to have, you know, Jack Daniels has a barbecue one the same weekend and we have the steak one. These guys qualified to be here. It's an invitation only. I mean, this, this is going to be the true world champion. They're going to get $15,000 first place. Really? That's a nice chunk of change for a six to eight minute steak. They're going to get a Super Bowl ring, the SCA championship ring. It's over an inch and an eighth wide. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a monster. Um, it's it's going to be a great weekend there. And we're also competing. Uh, Smithfield is is providing pork loins. And so all these steak teams are also going to cook pork loins. We're going to have a pork loin cook-off. Is that like day so before or just earlier in the day, same day? Earlier in the day. Yep. Yeah, it's just another challenge for the guys. Um uh, Red Box Smokers has donated a smoker for the winner, and then we also have a payout for that. But, um, man, somebody's going to win a smoker and some cash and for cooking Smithfield pork loins. What's the judging criteria for the Smithfield pork loins, Brett? <laughs> it's going to be taste, texture, appearance, and overall impression. We've done this off of the pork. And actually, it's tenderness, not texture. I'm sorry. But, yeah, we don't judge doneness on it. I mean, that's. You know, I think we talked about that last show. <laughs> That's tough to do. Yeah. Um, were there was there anybody that was invited to SCA that declined because they also happened to be qualified for the Jack Daniels this weekend? Well, you know, we've got guys like Mark Lambert that are there and Malcolm Reed, some pretty big barbecue names. But like Travis Clark, man, he qualified and couldn't come because of the Jack. And um, you know, we're actually looking at a new date next year. We're trying to get our own date. Uh, it's, it's pretty tough when you've got the world food, you've got the the um, American Royal that's bouncing around like a basketball, and then you got the Jack. So to try to find our own unique date has been a challenge. But we're going to redo it next year, and we want a weekend that anybody that qualifies can come. Is there a possibility, and I'm just spitballing ideas because you didn't ask me to, to do <laughs> the schedule to where you're ending – in that first quarter of the year where there really isn't any big competing events, you wait until the end of the year, obviously, as you mentioned, you have, you know, the, well, the American mm -hmm. Royals moved up, but you have Jack Daniels and you have Sam's and you have World Food Championships. That mm -hmm. takes a week or two weeks on its own. So the end of the year does mm -hmm. kind of pack up with some pretty premier events that people still think are important, at least to this point. Did you Absolutely. Have you ever given any thought about switching the format up a little bit and ending it in that first quarter of the new year? Uh, we've actually looked at moving it up a little bit and possibly moving it back. So yes, that is an option. Um, we haven't decided well, what we're going to do. Um, unfortunately, as great of a location as Billy Bob's Texas is, it is, um, we've outgrown it size-wise. Hmm. I mean, with 114 teams, we're going to have teams that are, you know, two of them to a 10 by 12, 10 or whatever it may be, some of them, because they know each other, but it's going to be a tight quarters. And next year, I've already added about 30 events. We look to add 50 to 60 next year, which will put us, gosh, that's going to be a, a crazy year. But if you got 160 teams at the championship, we just won't fit there anymore. Wow. Uh, Brett Galloway it's joining me here fun. on the show. Brett, let me ask you this question. You get a... Thanks for the invite, but I'm going to go to the Jack from a Travis Clark. Do you think, obviously the answer is yes, but do you think that in a year or two or three that a premier barbecue cook might be telling the barbecue contest, thanks but no thanks, I'm going to go cook the SEA because maybe in a handful of years from now, and uh, not that the $15,000 for a steak is anything to sneeze at, by the way. I mean, return on investment is huge there at fifteen k. But maybe it's twenty five grand or thirty grand. I don't think you're winning that much if you win the Jack Daniels, by the way, and the cost to do the State Cook Off Association extremely less. That's gotta be a potential for you guys that you're thinking, hey, maybe we can pull up, pull some guys from some pretty premier barbecue events, the way our thing's growing and the payouts that we're having for the return on investment. Well, honestly, I was a barbecue guy as well, and you know, I still try to cook if I get a 
weekend off, which is far and few in between, but I'd like everybody to be able to do both. I, I respect the Jack. I always wanted to get to the Jack and it, unfortunately I couldn't make it there. Um, so I'd, I'd like to see us be able people to do both. We've had, we've had a guy that chose to come to ours rather than go to the Jack last year, but, or the, I'm sorry, I guess it was the Royal last year, but, um, you know, ideally we'd like them to be able to do both, but hopefully we can see payouts going up. I mean, this is already the largest payout in state cook-off history. And uh, we just, hopefully we can see it to continue to go up as the number of teams go up. And um, hopefully we, with some of the sponsorships that are coming around, that this could be bigger and better for people. And maybe one day people will choose it. Who knows? This coming weekend will effectively terminate the 2017 season then? Yeah, this is yeah, this is the last one. We actually had an event that they had to relocate to the uh, Friday of our championship. It's in Apopka, Florida. Mm-hmm. I think he's got about thirty-five teams down there already. Um, but that'll actually be since we ended points on Monday. That'll officially be the first one of the new year. So we're already having the first one. It's kind of awkward because of the way it <laughs> fell, but you know sometimes it uh. You got to do what you got to do sometimes. <laughs> How many events are on the docket at this point for 2018? I had about 115, 116 this year. I've got 30 more already for next year. So if the majority should resign, I'd give us 100 and uh, was that 140, 145. Yeah, right so around far. that 150 mark. Do you plan on adding a bunch more as the year unfolds, or what you have earmarked at this point is probably going to hold true by and large? No, I think it'll I think it'll keep going from there. Um last year at this time we thought we would do about a hundred and hundred maybe. And because uh, we did eighty seven the year before just going into the year, but this year has been strong and I'm getting people people are renewing now for next year already. So I'm I'm thinking it's gonna be pretty big. The mid Atlantic area is gonna do eight to ten. We have our first class there the weekend after the championship. Um, we've got that coming. We did our first event in California two weeks ago. So there's some new markets that are opening. That's where we're really experiencing growth is in new markets. And then going to Italy, they, they project to do four to five in Italy. Got one in Switzerland, Austria. So we think all these new markets is where our growth is really going to be. But with growth comes training and, you know, you don't want to outkick your coverage. That's been kind of we didn't have to think we ever had to worry about that, but after year three, we're like, we better start training and training and training. And we haven't stopped. I mean, I've got interviews in the Midwest with, I don't know, it's five or six different reps up there or potential reps. So it, you're just trying to prepare. I mean, it's unbelievably the growth has been, and we're just having a lot of fun, and it seems the cookers are enjoying it as well. What's the best way if, if somebody wanted to – get some information on how to put one on? Do they just write you an email through the website or or do you have a list of representatives that handle regions of the country at this point? How does that work? Um, Well, everything really goes through the office right now, the corporate office. I'll call it corporate, but (laughs) the office. And uh, we do our, everything is online now. We've got a promoters pack online where they can get details. I'm just finalizing uh, the sanctioning forms on there. We're finalizing a new promoters pack that will give me information. That'll be on the website the week after the championship, and they're welcome to call me anytime. I man, I love I love taking a call about a new new event. This coming weekend, the World Championships is going down as it relates to the Stay Cook Off Association. So we'll see who walks away with best steak, and perhaps more importantly, fifteen thousand dollars for a first place stake if that's good enough for you we're talking with brett galloway the website stakecookoffs.com brett always appreciate the time man thanks so much for doing it thanks buddy you got it there he is brett galloway easily transitioning off of ip dtl barbecue central show appear via the smithfield hotline sound checking by the way if you were wondering um and you can't tell but I am at this point deleting the audio or the the video portion because 99% of you listen through podcast which has no video 
but guests will appear via picture unless it just demands video. Hold on. Lit. And I'm using a new connection company called IPDTL, like India Papa Delta Tango Lima. And hopefully next hour, you should be able to really hear a difference, uh, at least in two of the three guests, where they kind of sound like we're right in the same room together. It's like a virtual ISDN connection. Perhaps that means nothing to you. I get it. All right, folks, let me talk to you quickly about the pit barrel cooker. The holiday seasons are almost upon us. Hell, if you're up in my living room, you would think they are upon us. The Christmas tree is already up, but it's decorated in a fall way, not a Christmas way. So you want to think about a new cooker and pulling the trigger on a new cooker can be nerve wracking sometimes. What kind to get? How does the temperature control happen? What kind of fire management? What woods to buy? Pfft, who needs the hassle? Let me suggest to you one of the easiest, most efficient, and good-looking smokers on the market, the Pit Barrel Cooker. It makes cooking simple and fun. It might be the most unique, versatile, and easy-to-use cooker on the market today. Imagine a single cooker that turns out great traditional barbecue meats like briskets, pork shoulders, and ribs, while also being able to ramp up attempt to do burgers, chicken wings, and hot dogs. Versatility, all thanks to the revolutionary design that goes beyond traditional convection. Their hook and hang method places the food in the center of the heat, so it's acting like a stationary rotisserie. The result is great tasting, perfectly cooked meat each and every time. Not only is the pit barrel a fabulous cooking vessel, it's aesthetically sexy as well, and it's built to withstand heat and all types of weather conditions, thanks to its porcelain enamel finish. Can fit in the best of best back of most truck bands and SUVs. It's ready to go wherever you are. Of course, all barbecue folks love accessories and the pit barrel doesn't disappoint here either from rubs to the unique removable ash pan, the pit grips, the turkey hangers, the coffee mugs, the beer koozies, the stainless steel rub shakers, the rubs, full line of accessories that really complete your barbecue experience when it comes to the pit barrel cooker. Best part of all, 299 bucks. The pit barrel comes fully assembled, ready to cook on, ships for free right to your door. Not only does the cooker ship free, but everything ships for free in the lower 48 because they have so few returns. No promo code, no coupon code needed. Just go ahead and hit the website, pitbarrelcooker.com. That's pitbarrelcooker.com and see what everybody's talking about. You'll be happy that you did. All right, we will wrap the first hour right after this. Stick around, we'll be right back. Big name interviews, advice on cooking brisket and ribs, and the only host willing to share his honest opinion on all things important in the world of barbecue, it's the Barbecue Central Show. All right, welcome back. Thanks again to Brett Galloway from State Cook-Off Association for joining me this past segment, talking about the big championship coming up. Big weekend all around for live fire cooking. Uh, Matt Boer asked a question in regards to the Green Mountain Grill getting up to like 900 degrees. I think it is very important to note that there is a insert. So you have a uh, square that kind of V's down into a, uh, uh, what do you call it? It sits over the top of a, of, over the fire pot directly. Then you have a, a metal one piece. Then the pizza stone goes on top of that, and then you have a removable hood. So inside that pizza of an insert is where you get to 900 degrees. So you set the cooker, you set the cooker at 300 degrees. You're roughly going to get 600 or so degrees on the stone. If you set it to 400 degrees on the cooker, that'll get it to about 800. So wherever it is on the cooker, it doubles, but that's inside. So you're not going to warp the cooker or ruin it in any way. Trust me, I've cooked on it. 50 times, no issues, just great tasting pizzas. And it's like 150 bucks or less than that. So much fun. If you have a Jim Bowie or a Daniel Boone, I highly suggest. All right, let's step away and get ready for the second hour. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central show right here on the Barbecue Central Network. Stick around, we'll be right back.
this is Chris Payne from Euclid, Ohio, and you are listening to Barbecue Central. Happy to have you aboard here for the really big barbecue show. Boing. We cook because we have to, and we grill because we want to. We'll do it live. Okay. Well, to me. Fine. How is long? <laughs> <laughs> you have a great show of a big fan. Boing. So what, what, what seems to be the problem here? This man looks like he's dead, and he's in the, in the crackle. Charbono. It's all about the Charbono, dude. Succulent fish. What? We ate two feet before we learned. So listen, Laverne, you have to shake your face. I'm shaking like a dog shit peach seed. <laughs> we have top men working on it right now. Top men. All right, just like that, we are into the second hour. Hello! Congratulations, folks. If you missed the first hour, you have at least found the second hour of the Barbecue Central show. It is a fledgling little internet show that talks about the wonderments and delights of live fire cooking, barbecue, grilling, plancha, a barbacoa, you name it. We cover it all here in this show. I'm Greg Reppy. Happy to have you aboard. You can hit me up on the email, greg at the BBQ Central show, like John Dawson does each and every week. Ramps, thanks for the heads up about the change in video streaming platforms. I'd vote for YouTube as I will never get on Disgracebook to watch. (laughs) No offense, just that. Okay. John Dawson, the only one not on Facebook. Hey, that's fine. Facebook attracts views, and that's why I like. Plus, very easy, integrates well with the whole media page, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to have to get in touch with Kinger off air and re go over some YouTube strategy. Jason King is a YouTube maven and he's a big believer in the YouTubes. I am also a big believer in the YouTubes, but I am going to make sure that uh, the new YouTube channel for the show is done correctly so I can make YouTube money. Look, I get it. Um, A two-hour replay through video, a lot of people don't do that, but I put it up there for the masses. You know, each show is getting a dismal couple hundred or so views on YouTube, but if the folks like it that way, again, by and large, audio downloads, you know, to the tens of thousands each and every month. But Facebook is coming pretty strong with the views. So I'm going to go where the views are. Want to get my sponsors out. Want to do all that stuff. Want to get me out first and foremost. I want to carry the show. I want to put it on my back and carry it to new levels. So uh, that was John Dawson. Uh, I didn't ask for names, by the way, but John Dawson also weighing in. Uh, Name idea for the new 10-minute supplement, BBC in 10 minutes. He said BBC in 10 minutes when I saw the email, and I was like, like the British Broadcasting Company or something like that? BBC. I don't want to get sued. Still to come on the show this evening, the Embedded Correspondence segment. That's about 11 minutes or so away. Or, give me some room here. Follow me on this and, and let me preface this dissertation by first saying that I am not, I am not. Andrew, you are not the <laughs> I am not a fan of Bloody Mary drinks. I don't get it. I've had more than a few over the years just to see if my palate has changed. Because if you remember in my 20s and my other 20s, I didn't like wine. But as soon as I hit 30, my palate changed. Well, they say like every seven or 10 years, your palate changes. So. I have gone back to the Bloody Mary over time, and it's something that I have just not been able to grasp. That drink on its head, to me, is whack. But I do like to keep up with food and beverage trends, 
in an effort to remain timely and relevant when it comes to the show. Now, that being said, can someone please tell me what is going on with Bloody Mary drinks these days? I get that it's a nice Sunday beverage in the morning that might lead you to an even nicer noon or 1,300-hour bourbon or two or three, which inevitably leads you right back into your stupor from the night before. I get all that. But over the past handful of months, maybe even a year or so, the decadence and, to coin a phrase, over the toppedness of this cocktail, to me, is absolutely preposterous. Now, you might be like, hey, I love a bloody, and I ain't hurting nobody, and I got my secret tomato juice mix recipe, and I got my special vodka. I might toss in a little horseradish. Stop hating. And to that person or group of people, I say, hey, no hate here. Keep on keeping on. If that's what you like, you go ahead and do it. That's the drink. But to the tools who are not only making the drink itself, which again, in my estimation, is average at best. Even the best is average. But then cramming everything in and around the glass, you got to back it down. You know the kooks I'm talking about, and if you don't, newsflash, you're one of the kooks. Shake yourself. If a proper Bloody Mary to you means additionally adding slabs of bacon and barbecue ribs and jars of olives and pickles and slices of brisket and cups of chili and slider-sized burgers and onion rings and pretzels, and the list literally goes on. What is going on in your life? That's not a cocktail, son. That's dinner. Dinner for six. <laughs> Don't worry about the calories in the drink. Worry about the 4,000 calories hanging on and around the glass. For you people with your head in the sand, if you need a textbook example of why other countries, most other countries hate our guts, this is the reason. Because we can't not go over the top on stupid stuff. And all of this being done for what starts out as a drink that sucks by itself. You ever heard the old saying, lipstick on a pig? This is where that applies. Starting out with something good and building on that is a way to do it. Just ask Jason Day from Burnt Fingers Barbecue, who created the very popular bacon explosion a number of years back. He started out with that beloved smoked fatty that we all know and love and treasure in the barbecue and grilling community. Turned it into something way over the top when he stuffed that sausage with crispy bacon and cheese and barbecue sauce and then dropped bacon weave over the top of it because why not? Certainly the rest of the world hated us for that too. But at least it was something cool. Tricking out a bad cocktail with a bunch of stuff that has nothing to do with the cocktail is not a good idea. And if you need further illustration of this madness, I will now play you a video of a bar in Idaho that serves one of the craziest Bloody Marys. By the way, proper credit where credit is due. Thanks to John Dawson for hooking me up with this. Let me make sure I get this over in the right monitor so you can see this insaneness. This is a real Bloody Mary that I'm about to show you here. Here it is. Okay, so for those of you that can't hear it, you have the Bloody Mary in the middle. Where do you start with this thing? Here's the server that uh, also had to have a hand truck to bring it out. And you will see on this glass, not only do you have a drink, you have a full hot pretzel, you have a chicken wing, you have a slider hamburger. 
You also have a cup of chili and cheese and celery and a bacon slab and a beer. You have a beer on the Bloody Mary? <laughs> and it's all salted. It's 25 ounces. This, my friends, is exactly what I'm talking about. Where's the Bloody Mary? There's 7,000 calories on this thing. He had to take, he had to dismount 50% of what was hanging off of the drink so he could actually drink the drink. That's what I'm talking about. That's the issue. If you like Bloody Marys, and again, if you like the Bloodies, then fine. Be a bloody fan. But the excessive decadence and accoutrements and other culinary foods that have nothing to do with the drink. And don't forget, I'm a guy that loves to, that love to garnish an old fashioned with orange peel, not seven oranges. <laughs> Come on now. Are you really into overdoing it that much? Really? I don't think so. All right. That's the Bloody Mary talk. That's all I'm going to say on it. I'm not going to have one, by the way. But we will be having an embedded correspondence segment coming up next. But first, I'm going to talk to you about the Barbecue Guru. Are you looking to turn up the heat on the barbecue skills this summer or winter or fall? If so, you're going to need to get your hands on the most advanced ceramic cooker and high-tech barbecue accessory to hit the market in recent memory. I'm talking about the all-new Monolith Barbecue Guru Edition and CyberQ Cloud, just launched by the Barbecue Guru earlier in the year. The world's first temperature-controlled ceramic smoker and grill with a built-in power draft fan is going to give you the easiest and most successful barbecue experience available to date. These must-have new products will be making barbecuing easier than ever before and will be your new secret weapon for cooking delicious food each and every time. Ready to buy? Of course. Head on over to bbqguru.com. That's bbqguru.com and grab them up while they last. If you have any questions about what to order, please call them. Don't guess. Call them. That number is 800-288-GURU. Again, that's 800-288-GURU. Or again, visit the website bbqguru.com. That's barbecueguru.com. The Barbecue Guru continues to be a breakthrough in barbecue technology. We are back right after this. Stick around. We'll be right back with the Embedded Correspondence segment. Hang on. Giving you a monthly visit from a doctor of barbecue, a man actually named Meathead, the author of a barbecue Bible, bloggers, reviewers, competitors, and manufacturers by the dozens. It's the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Greg Rempe. All right, welcome back. This portion of the show being brought to you by CookinPellets.com, your number one source for quality wood pellets for all of your pellet-driven cookers. Visit CookinPellets.com for more information or to purchase. You can also download their free Cookin' Pellets app so you can be alerted to great shipping deals when they present themselves. Alternatively, you can buy from Amazon.com as well. All right. It has been going on for a month or so, I guess. The embedded correspondence segment being represented 
This evening is Tennessee, Texas, and Oklahoma. Steve Ray, Doug Scheiding, and David Huff joining me. Gentlemen, appreciate you making time. I guess uh, let's start off of my rant that I had just this past segment. Steve, let's start with you. Are you a Bloody Mary fan, and do you agree that Bloody Mary excess is kind of uh, over the top at this point? No, you know, I, I'm one of those guys that I drink one about every 10 years just to remind myself how bad I don't like them. You don't like just, them that much? No, I don't like them at all. I don't care if you put bacon in it, celery, whatever. I just, I've never acquired a taste. I don't eat, I don't eat tomato soup. I love tomatoes, but uh, I'm not a big vodka fan. Uh, just, just don't care for them. Are, do you find the excessive uh, accoutrements hanging off these Bloody Marys to be something of a subject of ridicule as well as I did? Yeah, I, you, know, you know, I don't see it. I don't see it that much because I'm not in. I'm, not, I, I, I'm, I guess, Greg, unlike you, I'm not in bars on Sunday mornings. <laughs> so I don't, I don't see a lot of. Uh, uh, I keep I my finger on the pulse of the food community. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> uh, Doug, uh, what's uh, you your? Know, uh, it's just like barbecue. They just hang a bunch of stuff on it just for looks, I guess. Doug, what's your take on uh, Bloody Marys? <laughs> oh, I, I if I've had a pretty uh, heavy football day of drinking the the day before maybe the next day i'll have a bloody mary but uh yeah we're i mean we're from texas ibca you know leave the garnish off let the bloody mary speak for itself david hoff do you have a bloody mary take two fingers of pappy van winkles no bloody mary <laughs> <laughs> well i uh, probably agree with that for sure all right uh, guys this is the segment where we let it all hang out. It can be barbecue-related. It doesn't necessarily have to be barbecue-related. Uh, we started with David Huff last month. Uh, Doug, let's go ahead and start with you, the Texas representative. What's your hot take for this evening? Okay, tiebreakers. IBCA uh, needs to change the tiebreaker from the, the top brisket finish. Um, it's kind of Texas sexy, I know, to, to, to do that. But um, we need to have a uh, – that needs to be the second criteria rather than the primary criteria. You know, we've got plenty of other issues with scoring system in Texas with the survivor multiple rounds and only points if you get in the top 10, you know, even if you have 50, 100, 200 uh, cooks at, a, at an event. Um, this weekend, I was at a contest and three people tied with 18 points out of, you know, 30 for grand champion. Two of them got two calls and one team had three top 10 calls. The team with three top 10 calls got third. I uh, just think that, you know, from from a best cook that day, the, the team that gets three calls ought to get the top uh, position. So um, there was a rule change that was suggested for the IBCA this year. But um, was I think was not even voted on by the board of directors. But uh, it's time to time to change. Do you propose, or what is your proposal for change, Doug? I guess if we're bringing it to light, what's our suggestion for remedy? Yeah, so move move brisket instead of being the the number one tiebreaker. Make that the second tiebreaker. And if someone gets three calls and uh, the other you know, team or even two calls because at a large contest, sometimes it's spread out so thin that you only get one or two teams that have two calls in, in any of the top 10. So um, that should be the first tiebreaker rather than the top brisket. Does IBCA score on full points or do they have half points? No, full points. So if you get, um, you know, chicken, brisket, ribs, uh, sometimes pork, but um, so there's 30 possible points if you get first place you get 10 points if you get 10th place you get one point if you get 11 or 200th you get zero hmm. uh steve ray what are your takes on tiebreakers and do you think uh, as laid out in doug's scenario if a team gets three top 10 calls is it uh safe to say that they had the most consistent or best cook of the day well yeah i would i would think so um uh, you know, you know, tiebreakers are, you know, I know in, in, um, sometimes in a KCBS event where I'm familiar with them, sometimes it goes down to a uh, flip of the coin, which is, uh, you know, that that's to me, that's that's that would be crazy. What I would do if you got a, if you got a, 
a tiebreaker. We need some sort of a sudden death. You know, maybe a uh, maybe whip out two little Webers and have the uh, two ties cook a steak and have it uh, have it judged as like a steak cook off. And you know, like like they're doing golf, sudden death, and uh, have a three three panel judge standing by, and everybody has to bring a or have the uh, contest. Uh, uh, feature a couple grills and uh, you know throw two steaks on and say all right here you go here's your chance and uh, have it exciting then everybody that's all the teams would gather around and clap and hoot and holler and uh, that'd be I think that'd be exciting man it'd, it'd get everybody into it we drop the steel cage down atomic elbows Jimmy Superfly snooker yep. it would be nuts absolutely hey, make it make it uh, make it uh, user and fan friendly. Doug, there's zero chance of that happening, though. Of course, right? Yeah, I, 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 I sure, actually, I'm, even I'm sure Steve is. probably. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, the coin flip does need to go. That's ridiculous. Uh, David, your take on ties and how they should be handled, uh, especially given Doug's scenario. I think the coolest team name or logo should break all ties. <laughs> um, but besides that, I mean, I get it. It's Texas brisket <clears throat> makes sense. I, I think what they could do, they could take to Doug's point the the highest number of top 10 finishes. Cause I mean, theoretically you could place first in the category and then say 11th in several, and then somebody could, I mean, I'm not doing the math right, but seven across the board, and you could come out with the same score. So the number of total top ten finishes could be the first tie break. Then the second tie break could be the highest single top finish. So if somebody took a first in the category and then a couple of thirds, but somebody else took all seconds and tied, I would say the tie break would go to whoever took the single highest um, category. Doug, when is a potential revisit to these rule changes going to Is it something that is just like an ongoing submission, or does it have to happen at the end of the year to be then turned around and disseminated for a new season? Yeah, something this, this large would probably be uh, once a year at the annual meeting, like in August. If it's a, you know, they'll do some minor tweaks during the, during the year. But um, in June, July, they, they submit to the, membership of IBCA, hey, you know, suggest some rule changes. And, you know, as we've talked about, pellet cookers has been on the, you know, chopping block each of the last two years, but has wow. made it. And if not, they've even strengthened uh, pellet cookers by allowing augers now in the rules. But um, so that's, it's done on a yearly basis. All right, David Huff, your hot take for the embedded correspondence segment this month. So I just wanted to talk, especially for the backyard guys out there, about you know not being afraid to change um, when you set out to do your best barbecue. Um, I thought it was interesting. I made a brisket last weekend, and I thought about when I started cooking um, barbecue. You know, my brisket started out uh, hot. I mean, very low and slow, fat side up. Um, I didn't trim any fat. Uh, I put some rub on it, but I didn't do an injection, and, and I wrapped it in foil about the time it hit the stall. And I thought I, I made you know a dang good brisket, so did my friends and family, so that kind of got me started in, in cooking barbecue. Um, and now this last brisket I made last weekend, uh, I separated the point from the flat before I cooked it. I trimmed almost all of the hard fat and visible fat off the outside. Um, I used an injection along with the rub. I cooked it fat side down and I wrapped it in butcher paper at the stall. So almost nothing like what I did when I started barbecue. And I think the results are, are more consistent. Um, I get it cooked in half the time as low and slow. I, it just, to, the ability to be flexible and say there may not be one specific way, but to try new things until you find out what works best. That's what barbecue is all about. David, I have to ask you from a results or a products standpoint from how you used to do it to how you just did it this past weekend was there any tangible difference to the good or the bad in the change because i think that's probably what a lot of the backyarders want to know they read about it a certain way especially if they're getting information older information either on the internet or on some of these older barbecue forums that maybe aren't as updated because those are a little bit archaic anymore these days but that's where a lot of people find 
information right off the bat. Is there a noticeable difference to the negative because of how you're doing it now versus how you did it? Uh, not to the negative. I, I know so much more about barbecue now, obviously, than when I started from research and hanging out at contests and, you know, listening to the guys on your show and, and reading books. Um, so it's hard to say if I'm just a better cook or if the changes that I've made have made the product better. I mean, there are some pretty obvious advantages to me with cooking hot and fast. I mean, 14 hours waiting on a brisket. I mean, if I can get the tenderness the same and the consistency and do it in eight hours, to me, that's a no-brainer. Um, I couldn't tell you fat side up versus fat side down made a difference. I listened to a lot of your experts on the show. You know, basting of the, the fat over the sides of the meat does nothing. It's better to have the fat protect it from the heat, etc. I, I mean, I couldn't put a finger on any one thing that made it better or worse. Um, but I just know that my results are more consistent. I'm enjoying cooking a lot more than when I first started. Um, and the flavors and tenderness have been, you know, where I want it to be, at least from a backyard, having friends over standpoint. Uh, Steve, what's your take on this? Yeah, David, you, I think you hit the nail on the head and I'll take it one step further. I know when we were, uh, right after we went to a, uh, a school by, by a real well-known, uh, champion barbecue guy uh when 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 i got home and we 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 established a program you know i did not vary from that program and our results were not doing well and and i was i couldn't figure it out but i was just too stubborn i did everything by the book i didn't adjust our temperatures i didn't adjust our injection our flavor profile i stuck with it and uh, our results were just very very um, just very disappointing for us. But then last year in 2016, I tweaked it a little bit. Uh, we, we changed some temperatures up a little bit. We changed a little flavor profile and our scores got a lot better. So it's not just for the beginner. It's for the people that are on a journey, uh, you know, through contests. And, and I think that's what makes guys like Tuffy Stone, Darren Worth, Travis Clark, Donnie Bray, all those guys, I think that's why they are so superior to everyone else is because they are continually tweaking their recipes. They are continually experimenting, changing things. And you don't, and you know, you don't, you know, your guys, you can only change things five minutes. It can make all the difference in the world. So David, I think what you're, what you're saying is a, is a great advice is you've got to be open for change and Put your stubbornness behind you and uh, look for if you're not getting the results you want, you've got to do something else, anything to try to get better scores, because at the end of the day, that's what it's about. Better scores and contests. Uh, Doug, you can speak on this as well, especially from a workshop standpoint. You're not necessarily dealing with competitors. Uh, I know Steve uh, was referring to scores in competition, but even for the backyard guy, and as uh, David kind of alluded to in his take, you want to be able to adapt. And if you're having issues or you're not getting the end product that you want, uh, go through and make changes and, and don't be afraid to try, right? I mean, this is probably what you're preaching in those workshop classes when you're doing them for Traeger. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I'm all about this one. Um, being an engineer, I'm always, you know, trying to improve things. And so it's just kind of ingrained in me. And, uh, I mean, that's, that's how I got the, the name rogue cookers is, uh, you know, when I got basically, uh, kicked off my, my team that I was cooking on, cause I always like to tweak and, uh, in those shop classes, like you're talking about, absolutely. When I cook at home and, and when I tell them is when you cook at home, if you cook two things, if you cook two steaks, cook them exactly the same except tweak one thing change it you know on one put oil and then put the rub and you know one put worcestershire sauce and then put the rub try something different on both of them if you're cooking three maybe cook cook them three different ways that's how i always like to improve is when i cook at home all uh and i'm cooking multiple things i will cook something two three different ways so here's my advice for all of you people out there that are listening to these great guys to give you their opinion. If you're going to be trying a whole bunch of different stuff or the first time you're going out, I think, A, it's always important to get to know your cooker or cookers. 
I would recommend buying as many as you can afford because it's really never a problem to have more than one cooker. If you can't afford it, that's fine. Have one, but get to know it intimately and how it works and how the fire works and be able to manage a fire and all that good stuff. But also don't be afraid to take notes. And I think the one thing that we really know about some of the best cooks that are out there, whether in the backyard or on the competition scene, they are diligent in writing down what they're doing and it worked or what they're doing and they didn't score right and then making changes from there. But it's hard to go back and re-reference, especially if you're a backyard warrior like me or as David was talking about in his take, if you don't have a record to go back and look at, well, I'm going to do ribs again, but I don't really remember what I did. Well, now you're already fighting an uphill battle. You might be the master of fire taming at your pit, but you have no idea how you cooked it the first time. So how are you going to make those adjustments the second time? So a written record or some type of an audible note or, or something where you can go back in an archive fashion and say, here's what I did on this date with these kind of ribs or this brisket or this chicken, and then replicate that, then make tweaks, make notes of the tweaks, find out what you did. And there you go. And that can really apply again to the backyard or on the competition side of things as well. And, and your really good cooks are doing that or having some type of a journal to go back and reference. Uh, Steve, your hot take. My hot take is, is not food or contest related, Greg. Oh. It's something that comes up at our business all the time. What do you do? Uh, and it, it, I, I sell tires. I own, a, I own an old-fashioned mom-and-pop gas station. I've been doing this for 35 years. Wow. And the thing that the thing that I've noticed has come down the pike, especially in the last five to six years, is the introduction of filling your tires with nitrogen. What? It is the it is the biggest scam ever put out by tire retailers is putting nitrogen in your tires. Now, where it came from, of course, is is NASCAR uses nitrogen to air up their tires because it's a very stable gas and it it, it resists temperature variations. Also, when you're landing an airplane, a 747 jet, those tires are filled with nitrogen because your life depends on those tires staying stable and holding air. But when you're pulling a trailer in your car or your truck, you know, do not pay extra for nitrogen. It is a farce. The 20, 70, about 73% of the air we breathe is nitrogen. So you're only getting, an, oh, okay, 70, 78%. Damn engineer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I love to be corrected in front of 2,700 people. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. I can, I can deal with that. 2,723, Steve. You, you breathe is, is, is nitrogen. And, of course, there's some argon and methane thrown in there, too. But it your tires do not need nitrogen. And and especially when I bought a, a, a new cook trailer recently, the guy asked me, do you want your trailer tires filled with nitrogen? It's only $40. I said, no, double no. I don't want my trailer tires filled with nitrogen for $40. I'll bring them up to my gas station and get 78% nitrogen out of my air compressor. So I just wanted to let everybody know, don't fall for that scam. Take the $40 that you'll save if you go, like, if you go before a comp and you say, hey, you go to the tire dealer, I said, I need new four new tires on my trailer. I need uh, six new tires on my dually, whatever. If they try to save that nitrogen, keep the money in your pocket and use it to buy a better brisket or more chicken to cook to up your chances because you will not gain anything. It is not, it's, it will not make your tire last longer. It will not make your tire resist punctures. It, it will not improve your sex life, except maybe for you, Doug. So don't <laughs> fall for that. Okay. Don't fall for that. Just don't don't say no. Just say no to nitrogen. No to nitrogen. This is a revelation. The likes I have never heard before of in my life. But I'll save my take here for a second. David Huff, d did you even know you could put nitrogen in tires? Well, I remember as a kid thinking if I'd put helium in tires, I'd have a flying car. But my dad told me that wouldn't work. <laughs> Um, other than that, nitrogen, actually, I don't have a take on this as much as a question for uh, Steve because I just 
a few years ago purchased um, an RV um, that I take the family camping with and take it to contests, and the tires say they are filled with nitrogen. My question mm-hmm. to him would be, can I, when they're low, can I just add air? Or someone told me once they have nitrogen in them, that's what you have to oh, use for no. maintenance. No, it is not, David. You can put any type of air you want. The 78% nitrogen that you would get at my gas station will mix just fine with the air that's already in your tires. Well, now so don't, I don't, even, scam, don't even hesitate. Then. I have okay. It's a big scam. Now I have a, a different follow-up question. If I take my car in for an oil change and I am using standard 5W whatever and I decide to go to full synthetic They tell me that once you go synthetic, you can't backwards compatible after that. It has to go full synthetic from there on. False or true? False. 100% false. Oh, my God. You can go back and forth. You can? Matter of fact, you'll see... Yeah, you'll see in Toyota manuals it, it will say if if uh, if synthetic oil is not available, you can use conventional oil in your Toyota, but go with conventional next time. The reason they want synthetic oil, it's important to use synthetic oil if your car calls for it, because the tolerances on the car's engines are so tight now that that oil has got to get in there and be a superb lubrication. And synthetic oil is the only thing that will get in there. Conventional oil, the the molecular structure will not get in there, but the synthetic will. So if your car says, we want you to use 5W30 synthetic or 0W40 synthetic for you Volkswagen owners, use it. Do not use conventional oil. Your engine will last longer if you use the oil that the manufacturer states. If your manufacturer, like a Dodge, says conventional oil is fine, do not spend the extra money. Use conventional oil because that's all you need. Wow. Uh, the roof is getting blown off. By the way, email from John Dawson. FYI, Costco fills all tires with nitrogen for free. So go to Costco, if, I guess, if you really want to fill for nitrogen. Um, Doug, is your mind blown blown off of nitrogen like mine was? I I didn't know it was such a big thing up there, but uh, yeah, I've heard of it a little bit, but not that much. But uh, nitrogen, I beg to differ. Nitrogen does improve my sex life. It's used to preserve <laughs> wine, and that is a very good thing in my household. Wow. Now, my question is, why do I, I did this this morning. Why do I have to pay $1.50 for stinking air when my tires get, uh, when it starts getting colder? Uh, the price of uh, air seems to have gone up quite a bit lately. You know why, Doug? I'm going to tell you why. Because people 20 years ago stopped going to places like mine and yeah. opted to go to places that have hostess Twinkies instead of mechanics. And the guys like me just finally just quit. They sold their businesses. They sold the property because all the gas stations are always on valuable pieces of property. Mm-hmm. And they went and did something else. Else. So now you've got uh, now you've got a bunch of people that stand behind the counter in a convenience store, and everything costs. Nothing's for free. There's no water. The air's a dollar fifty. If it works, you know, if the if the thing hasn't been cut off That's the end right. by some crackhead yeah. to recycle and to take it down to the uh, recycler place. So if if you have a, if you're lucky enough to have a service station in your neighborhood where a guy actually fixes cars, has gasoline and has free air, by all means go by there and thank him and give him your business and make sure he stays there or we will all continue to pay a dollar 50 for air that may or may not work. I have to be honest, I had no That's idea why. that tires were and I used to kind of deal somewhat with the NASCAR market. I had no idea that nitrogen was going in anything tire related. It sounds like it's more trailer stuff, but like would people ask you to fill their car tires with nitrogen? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's the biggest thing going. Now they're, they're putting them in they're putting them in trailer tires like David said. He said his trailer tires have nitrogen. The guy asked me if I wanted nitrogen in my trailer tires. And it you know, they there's all sorts of claims that they they say but they're all they're all baseless. It's just a bunch of uh, snake oil and uh, I hope it goes away. 
Um, people, you know, people come in and ask me all the time. They'll say, uh, you know, my tire lights on. Can you check my air? I said, sure. I said, pull right over here. Well, does your air have nitrogen? I said, sure it does. 78%. <laughs> And they go, oh, okay. Do you have to put in a nitrogen only pump to put nitrogen in the tires? No, I don't. I don't have nitrogen. Nitrogen is is actually there's a machine that pulls it out of the air somehow, and and it and you can put it into cars. It actually manufactures nitrogen. I'm not sure how it works because I don't have one, and I didn't fall for the scam. Because after after being there 35 years. And for 30 years, you were putting regular air, and now all of a sudden they have designer Calvin Klein air. I just didn't, I didn't go with that. Steve, you have literally shook the foundations of the Barbecue Central show, not food related. And I have to thank you for that. Wow. <laughs> well, I just want everybody to be safe, and you know, we've talked about trailer maintenance. You know, and, yeah. And every time we talk about something like this, I'll see uh, Jim Elzer had a. Uh, a terrible trip back from South Carolina just about three or four months ago where he lost a, a bearing on his cook trailer and he had to come back, hobble back on three on three wheels. And, uh, you, you, all, you know, I love reading these stories from all these guys because everybody's so busy and they take off for contest on uh, Thursday night and Friday mornings. They just jump in the trailer and uh, they've done everything except, uh, you know, make sure the buddy bearings are greased. And it's so easy to do, but if you don't do it, you're gonna, you know, you're all, we're all gonna have truck or trailer problems at, at one point. I know that, but there's some things that can be, uh, you can you can maintain things and not have to go through that, and and you can save money by not falling for the um, the fraud things like uh, nitrogen and air. Uh, Steve, one last question because I get into an argument with my wife about this at least ten times during winter and the hottest parts of the summer. If you start your car, whether it is cold or hot, and you turn on the air conditioning or the heat, and then turn the fan on high, right off the bat, are you going to damage the engine in some way or the, 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 the fan components or the blower or anything like that? No. No, the, the fan is, is separate from... The oh, fan is separate from the air conditioner and <laughs> from the heat. The fan does doesn't do anything but blow air, and uh, the air is the air is introduced into the the uh, AC by the on the at the evaporator side, or when you when you switch the dial on the dash, it makes the air go over the uh, heater core, and that's what makes the air hot or makes the air cold. And the wow. fan just moves the air, so it has nothing to do with the uh, heat or the coolness of the car. It's just a fan. And it it has nothing to do with the way the car runs. It's just like turning on turning on a fan, Greg. Just like turning on your radio full blast. So it would make no her, difference. Her telling me that I'm doing damage to the car is completely hogwash. Uh, she oh, listening? now hold on a second. Now you're starting to uh, <laughs> you're starting to hedge. Wait well, a second. I don't want to make Becky angry. No, you know. it's a matter of who's right and who's wrong. Now prove me right. <laughs> well. I'll say this. If <laughs> Becky told you that it is hogwash, <laughs> she is correct. <laughs> oh, look at this guy. All right. Uh, David Huff, anything on your way out before I let you go? No, but now that we've opened this up next month, I'm talking about cigars. All right. And uh, <laughs> by the way, uh, David, you sound really good. Uh, Doug Shiding, anything to go on the way out? Yeah, I would like to say that um, the San Antonio Rodeo Cookoff, which happens at the end of January, yep. opened up registration last week, and it is almost sold out. That's over 300 spots in a week. Really? That is incredible, wow. yes. Are they yeah, just for sale, it, it, or is it one of those things where you have to be like gifted down a spot? Oh, no, no, no. It, it's it's open registration, first come, first serve, and you have to pay at the time of registration. So that's it was two-thirds full on Friday, and they expected it to uh, sell out this week. Wow. That's incredible. That is 300 incredible. teams. Gosh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 300 teams. Steve, anything on the way up? Uh, no, I'll be going to the Jack this Saturday to um, oh. observe. All right. Doug, I look forward to meeting you in person. We'll be at uh, we'll David Bosca's. We'll be at David Bosca's trailer. We're going to do a little radio show that I do here in Chattanooga live, and we'll have that on Facebook as well. So if anyone listening wants to friend me in on Facebook, we'll be doing a Facebook live broadcast from there. 
and uh, looking forward to uh, seeing the sights of uh, the Jack. I didn't get to go last year. I went the year what before. Time is it? it was a big time, and uh, it is a it is a big special thing. Uh, the time of the show, uh, Eastern Standard Time, from nine until ten. So just do the math backwards, and you'll know what time to listen. And where do we go to listen to it? Uh, ESPN Chattanooga dot com. All right. Just uh, hit the listen live icon. Steve Ray is the Tennessee correspondent. Doug Scheiding is the Texas correspondent. David Huff is the Oklahoma correspondent. Gentlemen, always appreciate the time. Thanks so much for doing it. Thank you, Greg. And there Thank they you. are. All on IPDTL. Props to me for that. All guests on the Barbecue Central show appear via the Smithfield Hotline. That's right. Yummy. I got to tell you, uh, both uh, David Huff, the Oklahoma guy, and Doug Shiding, the Texas guy, unless I'm way off base, sounded like they were in studio with me. That's what we're kind of looking for and, and going for into this new technology for going video and connecting as good sound quality as possible. Now, you need USB microphone. You need to have Google web browser, but pretty much everybody has Google web browser. So if you get a USB mic, you can connect in through this IPDTL. And you sound, I mean, God, Doug sounded like he was sitting right in the room with me. So did David. Uh, and even Steve's microphone, which was on his laptop computer, sounded really good for what it was. He'll be hooked up with a microphone for next month. So looking forward to that. But yeah, great first test of that service. So. We'll uh, now play catch up a little bit and tell you about Big Papa Smokers. That's right. The number one stop for online barbecue and grilling purchases. Their curated selection of only the best outdoor cooking and grilling supplies will get you on the path to better barbecue results in no time. Everything at Big Papa Smokers has been pitmaster approved by Sterling Ball himself. From the award-winning rubs and sauces to the American-made grills and smokers, Big Papa Smokers has everything you need to become a better outdoor cook. Whether you're in the backyard or a competition pro, Bar uh, Big Papa Smokers has something for you. Big Papa's known for their championship rubs and seasoning, popular flavors like Sweet Money, Cattle Pride, Cash Cow, all proven winners on the competition circuit. And in the backyard, Big Papa's offers 13 perfectly balanced flavors that will transform ordinary meals into extraordinary. Whether you're cooking to impress the judges or grilling for your family, Big Papa Smokers' award-winning rubs and seasonings will not disappoint. Pick up a bottle today at BigPapaSmokers.com. If you're looking to improve the flavor of your competition barbecue recipes, Big Papa Smokers has combined forces with fellow rub company Simply Marvelous Barbecue to form what has now become known as the West Coast Offense. Over the past few years, the West Coast Offense has cornered the market on competitive barbecue and redefines the flavor profiles that cooks from across the country have begun to aim for. Big Papa Smokers has the online exclusive for Simply Marvelous Rub. Stop at their website, picks them up today. Big Papa is also the proud owner of the award-winning Granny's Barbecue Sauce. Looking for a new go-to barbecue sauce that pleases everyone? Granny's traditional yet powerful flavor that reminds us why we fell in love with barbecue in the first place. Find Granny's Barbecue Sauce and other top-rated barbecue sauces at BigPopSmokers.com. And aside from their premium selection of rubs and sauces, Big Pop Smokers offers a variety of pellet charcoal and wood cookers. Are you looking for a versatile smoker that's easy to use? Check out the Mac 2 Star General Pellet Grill. Big Papa Smokers, the exclusive Mac dealer, and even offers special packages. If you're not a fan of pellet suckers, check out the old Hickory Ace BP. It's the only charcoal smoker that Big Papa Trust put on his competition trailer. If you're a backyard barbecue enthusiast like me, looking for a durable and versatile grill that lasts forever, the M Grill from Texas might be just what you need. They're built like tanks. Not sure what grill you need? You really can't go wrong with any of the grills or smokers featured on BigPopSmokers.com. They have something for every kind of backyard cook and budget. Check out their website. Shop their full selection today. It's clear that Big Papa Smokers is the place to go for all things barbecue. Every product featured on their website has been hand-selected to help you barbecue better. Boost your barbecue skills with the help of Big Papa Smokers, the number one online barbecue store. You can call them toll-free at 877-828-0727 or shop their website at BigPapaSmokers.com. That's B-I-G-P-O-P-P-A-S-M-O-K-E-R-S, BigPapaSmokers.com. All right, we will be back right after this for a little bit of an open segment. Stick around. Be right back.
continuing to produce incredibly mediocre content in an exceptionally professional way. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central Show. Once again, here's your host, Craig Rampey. All right, welcome back. This portion of the show is being brought to you by Smithfield. I said it last hour. I'll tell you again right now. The 2017 grant program was such a raging success this season that if you want to be considered for 2018, you head on over to the website smokingwithsmithfield.com right now to apply. Click on the grant program link at the top. And you can submit your application for the 2018 grant program that was talked about on the show last week with Taylor Davis. Applications now being taken until November 1st. So extend it out just a few more days. Don't miss out. Very popular. Very exciting. Uh, Where did I want to go? Here it is. All right. So we didn't do this last year. Uh, mostly because I didn't get a lot of requests from folks looking to do it. But if you are running for KCBS Board of Directors and you would like to get some time on this here show, the only impartial barbecue and grilling platform anywhere in the world, please feel free to get a hold of me, drop me an email, give me a shout, uh, greg at thebbqcentralshow.com, and we will book a Tuesday coming up so you can get on talk about what you like. However, there is a caveat. Bags and bags of cash? No. Highline whips at my disposal? No. No, no. If you do the show and you get elected, you cannot, you can not. Andrew, you are not the (laughs) fire. You cannot unilaterally turn your back on the show just like 99% of the people have in KCBS. Sure, no problem using the most popular barbecue and grilling show to run your agenda and campaign for yourself to get elected. But when I want an interview, all of a sudden the only replies I get back are crickets. Why is that? What's changed? For instance... When it was announced that KCBS and MMA were done being exclusive together, at the end of this year, I submitted no less than three or four times to KCBS to come on and talk about their side of it. Still waiting for an answer. What's the big deal? You really don't want to come on and talk about why the executive committee thought that was the best direction to head KCBS in? The decision was made. You don't want to give your side of that decision and go through that thought process. Why not? Why not? And come on and scream from the rooftop. We've just made this great decision. And here's why we think it's a great decision. And here's what we're going to do moving forward, both pushing the vision and the brand and all the other stuff about KCBS forward. We think this is a great idea. We like Mike, but instead we're pushing for putting out One of the most ill-written press releases in the history of press releases wasn't the best look. Mike McLeod came on the show, answered every question, then actually did a follow-up segment to answer more questions. Always available, always professional. To me, truthful from his standpoint, KCBS, crickets. So if you want to do the I'm running for the board for Kansas City Barbecue Society. Again, I am happy to host you here, but don't forget about me when I come looking. I'm here to both promote the good, of course, easy to do, right? But also question the whys of things that might seem a little questionable to me or other people, because if it's questionable to me, it's gotta be questionable to somebody else. And I was always taught in school If you have a question, ask it because at least five or six other people in the class probably want to ask the same question. They just want to ask. So don't hide if you feel that it doesn't suit you. Anyone can do that. But please get a hold of me if you're interested. I promise I will host you. So there. All right. One more read and then we'll wrap the show and then we're all caught up and all that good stuff. Because we went long with the embedded correspondence segment. Of course. 
Folks, I'm going to talk to you about Cook Shack. They manufacture smoker ovens for barbecue lovers with any amount of experience, whether you barbecue in the backyard or the competition circuit or in a five-star dining facility. Cook Shack has the unit that will do the job, and with a full line of barbecue sauces, spices, pellets, and wood chunks, it's the perfect one-stop shop. Cook Shack strives to be your barbecue resource center by offering cooking classes, online recipes, how-to videos, two blogs, smoke and grilling 101s, and a video cooking classroom. Check out their website at cookshack.com or follow them on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Pinterest, and Google+. Plus. Get advice and share your passion for barbecue on their world-class barbecue forum. Cook Shack pellet-fired smokers are the choice of champions because they were designed by a champion, Ed Fast, Eddie Moore. The FEC 100, PG 1000 are always customer favorites. The PG 1000 can double as a smoker and a grill, low and slow, hot and fast. The pellet grill line gives you the most for your money. Cook Shack residential electric smokers are the number one smoker in the industry. High quality means high durability and versatility. Anything you could cook in your oven, you can make in a Cook Shack. Passion and dedication drives Cook Shack's manufacturing with quality always being the top priority. Get the best in barbecue since 1962. That's right. Call toll-free 800-423-0698. That's 800-423-0698. Or again, visit the website at cookshack.com. That's cookshack.com. All right. Uh, we will wrap the show coming up right after this. You're listening and watching the Barbecue Central show right here on the Barbecue Central Network. Stick around. We'll be right back. Injecting butts. If you've never heard this before, you might think you found the best triple X show ever. Let's get back to the most homoerotic host out there today, Craig Rimpy. Speaking of homoerotic, <laughs> homoerotic, homoerotic. Email from David Huss, my last segment guest. Thanks for dropping the video feed, Greg. Now I don't have to worry about choosing the right wardrobe. Going on a diet and can do the segment in my thong. Thong? The thong song? The thong song. No. Thanks for putting that thought in my head, David. Appreciate that. All right, let's go ahead and wrap it up all the way back in the first hour. Andy Allen from Rooftop Barbecue talked about this coming weekend. We're going to be doing the Jack Daniels Barbecue Cook-Off, World Championship Barbecue Cook-Off. Good luck to him and everybody else competing this coming weekend. Then we talked with Brett Galloway from the State Cook-Off Association. They're going to be hosting their World Championship Barbecue Cook-Off. They own self crowning a national, nay, world champion. 100, and I believe he said 14 teams will be taking place, cooking steaks this, uh, steaks this weekend, and the winner gets a $15,000 check for doing it. In the second hour of the Embedded Correspondence segment, a raging success once again, Doug Scheiding from Texas. We also had David Huff from Oklahoma and Steve Ray from Tennessee. Remember... Nitrogen is a scam. It's in the air already, 78% or 73%, depending on who you ask. And again, if you are looking at running for KCBS Board of Directors, hit me up. I'll do it. Uh, again, programming note, we are off next week. No show October 31st, but we'll follow up the week after that with hopefully a Jack Daniels winner amongst other guests. September 11th, 2001. I will never forget and until next Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, this is your program host and proud U.S. American, Greg Rempe. Good night now.